We've lost Doug. We're gonna keep going. We don't know where, but it's too much for to stop. Hello mountain bikers, Vital MTB in the house, coming at you today from the Spanish Pyrenees. If I look a bit more tired and older than usual, it's because we've just spent two pretty epic days knocking out about 2,000, 2,500 meters of climbing and four, four and a half thousand meters of descending. Some pretty epic terrain. And we've done all that to test Orbea's brand new Occam trail bike. If you're in the market for a short to mid-travel trail bike that has the geometry to pretty much do it all, then keep watching as we take you through this new offering from Orbea and you'll get to jump on board as well to rally it down some pretty epic trails. What's a modern trail bike? Well, it's no secret, bikes are getting more and more capable and people want to do more with their bikes all the time. Whether that's a cross-country rider who wants to push his bike a little bit more for a fun day out, or a trail rider who wants to tackle enduro trails, or uh, somebody who bought an enduro bike and wants to take it once a year to the bike park. Orbea, of course, have taken note of this evolution and in fact, uh, their Oiz TR, which is the slightly longer travel version of their cross-country bike, has sort of started to push into the early trail bike territory and as a result they found themselves with two Occam's in the past, an Occam TR and an Occam AM where of course the latter uh, pushed into uh, baby enduro territory with uh, 140 millimeters of travel and fairly capable angles. That bike certainly saw some use beyond the typical trail category definition and of course Orbea's full-on enduro weapon, the Rayon, has been making some waves on the Enduro World Series and has been getting very good reviews. So when it came time to redesign the Occam, Orbea took a long hard look at what it is they wanted this bike to do and they designed it accordingly. You can probably guess that the bike got a bit longer and a bit slacker. You're not wrong. Uh, they've added about 20 millimeters to the reach numbers compared to the old Occam. They've steepened up the seat tube angle to a very supportive 77 degrees. The head angle sits at 66 for most of the models in the range and the chainstays have been given a small boost from 435 millimeters to 440 millimeters. The seat tube is short and the standover height is low, which opens up the possibility for riders to choose their frame size based on riding style and other preferences without being held back by the standover height or having to run a shorter dropper post. When it came to suspension kinematics, Orbea wanted to make the new Occam much more progressive than the previous version and they also took the time to rework some of the other curves so we now have more anti-squat and less anti-rise compared to the previous edition. Orbea experimented with different shocks and shock tunes and they came to the conclusion that running a slightly shorter shock body which translates to a higher leverage ratio actually allowed them to put a bit more pressure on the shock and made it easier for them to sort of fit in to the middle of the tuning range uh, with what they were getting from uh, from Fox when working through the dynamics of this new model. And if you compare the new Occam to the old version, you'll also note that Orbea has done away with the flex stays in favor of more conventional pivots. On the topic of the linkage design, the rear pivots are concentric to the rear axle, which Orbea says helped them achieve both their anti-squat and anti-rise goals for this new design. Taking you through some of the details of the frame, there are carbon and alloy versions available. The carbon is a full carbon frame, the monocoque construction. The main frame lands at 2.3 kilos for a size medium without shock. It's a pretty good number in this category. Orbea worked a lot on getting the stiffness of the frame just right. So they experimented with different diameters of the main pivot axle until they got it to a point where they felt it was just the right mix of compliance and stiffness. The asymmetric bridge that they've implemented also plays a large role in how the frame behaves around the main pivot areas. Looking at some of the details, we get fully internal cable routing. It's not guided, but it's fairly straightforward to work on with just the main sections to push through. Orbea has implemented a pretty nifty little external protector that sits over the uh, shifter and brake cables as they exit the frame to re-enter the chainstays. Uh, pretty nice. There's a beefy chainstay protector, ISCG tabs, uh, although our bike came with a little bolt-on chain guide that seems to work well. There's a threaded BB, which will no doubt please a lot of people. Room for a good-sized water bottle in all the frames. 
for the alloy version, Orbea implemented what they call a high polish welding finish. So they actually polish off the welds and it implies a particular way of working that also renders the alloy less sensitive to heat risers around the welded areas and should help with durability. It looks pretty slick. Another nifty detail is the derailleur hanger, which is designed so that you can remove it without any tools. You do need an Allen key to remove the axle, but once the axle is out, you can actually twist off the retaining bolt and then replace your hanger. The derailleur hanger is also designed to bend quite easily. That was a design goal that Orbea was given by their enduro racers, who after destroying a few rear derailleurs with the Rayon, uh, thought it would be a good idea to add some flexibility to the rear derailleur hanger. On these first versions that we've been riding here, the derailleur hanger has turned out to be a bit too soft, uh, but Orbea is obviously rectifying that before uh, the bike hits the shelves. If you know anything about Orbea, you know about their Mayo program, the My Orbea program, which basically allows any customer, pretty much anywhere in the world, at least where there's an Orbea distributor, to go online and to configure not just the build of their bike, but also the color. So there's an area in the middle of the new Occam, which takes one color, the rest of the frame takes another one, and you can also specify uh, what to do with the decals. So people can come up with some pretty nice looking combinations and in fact here at press camp we got to sample quite a few of them because they prepared most of the frames in different colorways it's a pretty sweet touch uh, for customers of the m10 and the m limited bikes the two range topping versions uh, there is no upcharge for this so uh, simply know that you might be looking at a slightly longer lead time uh, four to five weeks is quoted in general although orbea are implementing some fairly significant changes to their production facilities in spain with the aim of bringing down the lead times. Looking through the range, it kicks off at around $3,000 with the alloy versions and it climbs all the way up to almost $8,000. The bike we've been riding here is the M10, which clocks in at €4,999. It's a very well-specced bike. Because we were going to be riding some pretty epic terrain, including an EWS stage and some pretty gnarly downhills, Orbea chose to set us up with a Fox 36 up front at 150 millimeters of travel, which bumps the head angle to 65 and a half, and the C tube angle slackens out to 76 and a half. This upgrade is available through the Mayo program. At the same time, you pick your colors, you can specify all kinds of things on your build. This is a pretty nice possibility to really tune your Occam to the particular type of riding you intend to do with it. We have the excellent Fox DPX2 handling suspension duties in the rear. And we've been riding Shimano's brand new XT Group, although the new brakes weren't quite available for this launch, so we had to make do with XTR. The new XT Group looks very different from traditional Shimano. Of course, we have a big 10 to 51T cassette, which should really help you get up most times. But we also have an entirely redesigned rear derailleur with a large offset of the top pulley wheel and different parallelogram geometry. For the seat post, Orbea has actually spent a couple of years developing their own and this is the very first time it's been seen out in the wild. There's 130, 150 and 170 millimeter versions available. We've been riding the 150 millimeter version here. Uh, they've based it on a more or less off the shelf cartridge, uh, but they've done their own development around the rest of it. Here it's been mated to Shimano's dropper post lever and we found this combination to be really, really good. Uh, very impressed. Obviously we need more than two days to test it to really know, but stoked on it so far. Smooth, easy to modulate, Great lever action and it's been very very solid, no sponginess detected and uh, not a lot of side to side play. Looking over the cockpit we have a carbon bar from Raceface, we have a 50mm stem from Raceface, rounded off with grips from Raceface. We've got some all new wheels from DT Swiss that we've been testing here called the XM1650s and we've been pretty happy with how they've been performing out on the trail. Set up with a Maxxis High Roller 2 up front and a Recon out rear both in exo casing. Had us a little worried with some of the rocks here, but we've really made it through these two days with very few punctures in the group. The engagement of the hub isn't excellent, but it's perfectly acceptable for most kinds of riding. On the trail, this new Occam has impressed us right from the start. Moving out, it's super efficient, very snappy on the pedals. The 77 degree C-tube 
really puts you in good positions over the pedals, never exposing you to that dreaded off the back feeling as you're going up steep climbs. The increased anti-squat works really well. We still have enough traction to make it up tech climbing, but the bike never feels sluggish. And over two days of riding, taking in some pretty severe climbs, we've never once reached for the lockout lever on the shock. It really isn't required. As you'd expect from the 29 inch wheels, the bike rolls over a lot of obstacles in its way. Helped, of course, in this version by the excellent Fox 36 up front with 150 millimeters of travel, giving you that extra sense of security and a little bit more margin for error as you charge into unknown terrain. But the bike feels well balanced and we've no doubt that it works perfectly well as a trail slash mini enduro bike, even in the 140 millimeter versions. Once the trail heads downhill, the bike is super composed. The angles really feel spot on for most kinds of riding up to and including proper Enduro World Series stages. We never felt like we really had to hold back before we would charge into sections. Even though we didn't know any of the trails and we had to ride everything on site, most of the times we got away with it. Right, the guy up there is Doug from Mask MTB, who's been guiding us around on this trip. And he obviously knows all the lines, so he's gonna try and stay on his wheel and have a look at what he's doing. Whee! with the ever blurring boundaries between trail and enduro bikes. Feel free to, to send it even though this thing says trail on the on the box. It's most definitely a mini enduro and of course with the 36 up front we're a little bit more bulletproof here but even so even if you go for a 140 mil option the angles and the general composure of the bike spot on and you can definitely let, let it go over the chunky stuff Ooh. some of this riding is just so good so would you choose an enduro bike for this kind of terrain you might but this is just so much fun in terms of how light the bike is and how you can pick it up over stuff and it's still surprisingly capable of taking what you dish out. So yeah, if you, if you feel like you really are taking your bikes to the, to the limit, then you might have broken a bike or two in your career. You'll probably be looking for a full enduro bike for this kind of stuff, but, but really, a trail bike like this doesn't have to hold you back. On this kind of stuff. It is surprisingly capable and stable. As I already mentioned, with the Fox 36 up front, you're happy to dish out. But the rear is doing a fine job of keeping up. Even as I just approximate these lines. Woo! We've lost Doug. We're gonna keep going. We don't know where, but it's too much for the stop. Woo! Yeah, I'm gonna hammer on. I hope I'm on the right trail, but I don't really care. It's too much fun to start. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> oh. ah. Well, with trails like this and views like this, you can't really go wrong. Ah. Definitely wanna take my hat off to the guys at Orbea. Uh, they've done a pretty sweet job uh, designing and specking out this bike. Uh, once again, with the 36 up front, gives you that extra degree of uh, bulletproofness, but all in all, very capable package. There comes a point, of course, where, especially with the burly 150 millimeter fork up front, the 140 millimeters out rear are gonna struggle to keep up. But when that happens, the bike remains very composed. It's rare to encounter any really jarring hits or, or anything unexpected from the, the rear suspension. It's really just telling you, hey, I'm running out of travel. If you wanna keep pushing, that's fine, let's do that. Just make sure you can cash any checks you write as you're sending it into the unknown. But there's enough progressivity on tap to really make bottoming out a non-issue and certainly devoid of any drama. We did find that with the high leverage ratio and the high pressures we ended up running, we got to the last third of the rebound adjusters if we wanted to quiet down the rear a little bit. So if you like a 
real poppy and lively feel from the rear end. This bike delivers in spades. If you need to crank down the rebound to sort of settle it in, you can do it. Just know that you're probably gonna get towards the end of the adjustment range on offer. It shouldn't be an issue because if this is the kind of bike you're going for, then you know that the rear end is gonna hop around a little bit more than it would on a full-on enduro speed, of course. Hey, Doug. Tell us a bit about who you are and what we've been doing here. Okay, so I'm Doug McDonald. I'm a guide and owner of Basque MTB, a guiding company in the north of Spain in the Pyrenees. And for the last two days, we've been trying the new Orbea trail bike uh, on a mix of trails through one of the least populated areas in Spain called Guara. Uh, we've been running a mixture of uplift trails and old walking trails, 2,000 meters of climbing and about 4,000, 4,500 meters of descending. And we've had a bloody good time! <laughs> we've had a really good time, yeah, yeah. look at my hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm standing behind the camera so you can't see how knackered I am, <laughs> but I'm pretty spent. It's been good. In summary, trail bikes are getting ever more capable, and Orbea has certainly jumped on that train with the new Occam. The bike is lightweight, but it feels even lighter when you move out, thanks to the increased anti-squat and steeper seat tube, which help make it a perfect companion for long epic days out. But don't go thinking that there's gonna be a price to pay when the trail heads down again, because this bike is every bit as capable as enduro bikes of a couple of years ago, and it's certainly going to push its big brother the Rion to up its game a bit. We may or may not have heard some rumblings about what might happen to the Rion. Can't tell you anything more than that right now, but it would seem a logical evolution for sure. Orbea's comprehensive customization program, Mayo, lets you really build the bike that you want. And on this platform, we're pretty sure that most of you out there can find a version that will really suit your needs. Of course, Two days is a short time to evaluate any bike, especially on terrain that you're not particularly familiar with. But there's something to be said for that as well. Charging into unknown terrain really means that you have to gel with the bike and trust it to get you through to the other side of whatever lies ahead of your front wheel. And that's really what this Occam has been doing for us here. We've gotten ourselves into some hairy situations, but it's pretty much bailed us out each time. It's a very confidence-inspiring ride. And your biggest problem now might just be picking the colors. Thanks for tuning in to another Vital Review. See you out there on the trails.